Hello, and welcome to the Monash College Virtual Classroom Demonstration. I'm Glenn Jennings, the Diploma Program Director at Monash College. I'm really pleased you're able to join us today to get a first-hand look at how our virtual classroom operates. While international borders remain closed, providing a high quality education for all of our students remains our priority. And we are delivering this through blended online virtual classroom and face-to-face -face pathway programs. It is our commitment to provide new students starting their studies with us offshore, the opportunity of a guaranteed pathway into Monash University without slowing down the education journey. In addition, the completion of Diploma Part Two allows a student to transition to the second year of their chosen undergraduate course at Monash University. Our online environment is built on the same approach we use in our face-to-face -face classes. The same teachers, the same curriculum, the same support. In fact, we've actually strengthened our support model so that students receive tailored individual support from experienced teachers who can help them with specific concerns. We also have learning skills advisors, counselors, and student engagement specialists, all dedicated to supporting and encouraging our students. In today's virtual classroom taster session, one of our diploma teachers, Morgan Ferruccio, will be taking you through an introduction to IT and programming. And you'll be hearing from diploma students Michaelia and Jonathan, as they share their experiences in the virtual classroom. We'll also talk about the support services available to students to make sure you have the best possible experience in the college. Our team has one goal in mind, to give you a fantastic learning experience that sets you up for your undergraduate studies. I'm gonna hand over now to Morgan, and I look forward to joining you in Monash College virtual classroom and then face to face on campus once the travel restrictions are lifted. Thank you very much. Over to you, Morgan. Thanks, Glenn. Um, my name is Morgan Ferruccio and I'll be taking you through um, part of this taster session as well. So, my name, as I said, Morgan Ferruccio. I'm glad to have you join us today for a sample class on IT and programming. I'll take you through a virtual classroom taster and show you how we used Zoom to teach our classes. You'll see a chat function on your screen. Please put in any questions that you have throughout the session and we'll get to them and reply as best as we can. So welcome to the introduction to IT and programming in the virtual classroom at Monash College. Today, I'll be discussing programming, but first I'll just introduce myself and what I do at Monash College. Then I'll give you a quick introduction to programming as a topic. I'll give you a quick example of actual programming kind of in action, and then cover some of the common uses for programming. I'll run you through a quick Kahoot at the end, just to check if everything's made sense and finish up with a recap to conclude. So, my name's Morgan Ferruccio. I'm a unit leader and teacher at Monash College. One of the units that I teach is called mobile apps. And in this unit, I teach students to create mobile apps for their phone. You can see the app over here, like a QR um, scanning app. This is actually one of the previous assignments that we had our students complete. So they'd scan a barcode and it would tell some information about that barcode. So we help our students create these small little apps. Today I'm going to talk about programming and I'll give you an idea of what learning programming at Monash College using the virtual classroom might look like. So programming. It might seem a little bit scary and complicated, but we can draw a lot of comparisons to our spoken languages. We've got words, we've got grammatical requirements, 
spelling requirements and structural rules. And in the same way that maybe if, if you don't quite use the correct words or miss out on some grammatical requirements, uh, you might not quite get your point across. The same kind of goes with computers. So if we write the wrong code, that's where an error will occur. And then we've got to try and fix that by correcting these mistakes. Um, and of course, the main difference here is that instead of speaking to each other using our spoken languages, we're using these languages to speak to and communicate with computers. Now, during my lectures, I often demonstrate code after explaining the theory behind it. And I'm going to do something similar right now. I'll go through a very simple example where I'll display a short phrase to the console. So you should now see that I've brought up my web browser. This is just a browser-based um, development environment called JSBin. You don't really need to understand what you can see here, but on the left-hand side of my screen is where I can write the code. And then on the right-hand side of my screen is where the output is going to be displayed. Okay, so I'll quickly go ahead and type a very simple piece of code. Okay, so you can see what I've typed here on the left side of the screen. And then if I go ahead and press the run button on the right, you'll see that it now appears as some text. Okay, now you might be wondering what's actually going on here. So the code on the left has three main components it's got the console which is what we would call an object, okay? And objects in programming are similar to objects in real life. An object in real life has some sort of behavior or actions that you can use with it. So I've got my drink bottle over here. One of the things I can do with my drink bottle is I can open the lid, okay? So I can open it and I could take a drink if I wanted to. I can close the lid as well. Um, so there's a few actions that come with that object. Same thing in the program here. So we have the console, and the console has an action. The action that I'm using is called log. And all that action is going to do is print out my text into the console over here. Now, what text am I going to be printing? Whatever is inside these parentheses here. So those three components allow me to print this out. And a lot of the programming that we do is we're using some sort of object and its action and then making it do something. Um, now, of course, this is a very basic example, but we very quickly get into content where you can actually create small programs, maybe doing some calculations or sorting through some information or even creating a small game. Okay. So I'll hop back to the slides. And you might be wondering, well, why hello world, right? Is there any significance here? And in this case, there actually is. Hello world is a programming tradition that everybody who's done programming will generally start with. So when I started programming, that's what I started with as well. Um, and you could think back to the technology greats such as Mark Zuckerberg, the creator of Facebook, or Bill Gates, the CEO of Microsoft. These guys would have started in the same position as we all do. Right? So really, anybody could create the next big thing. We're all starting from the same place. Um, who knows where we can go from here? Now, in terms of what we can actually use programming for, a lot of things probably spring to your mind immediately. Things like mobile phone apps and games are probably the obvious ones. But if you think a little bit further and maybe into technology that we kind of rely on in our everyday lives, things like vehicles, right? Your car actually does have programming in it. Appliances like your microwave or an oven or even an air conditioner, um, things like that, all of those need to be programmed so that they can do what they need to do. So programming is really the foundation of most of our um, underlying technology that we use today. So in terms of the virtual classroom, so the virtual classroom will really run pretty similarly to this session. What I'm giving right now is more akin to a lecture. So it's more where I would explain something or demonstrate something. Um, and of course, you've got an opportunity to kind of ask questions and interact, but it's mostly me trying to deliver the information so that you've got an idea of everything. 
then in the tutorial and labs, you can put that information into practice. So in the tutorials, we tend to focus a little bit more, more on theory. So making sure we really do understand those theories and how they work. But then in the labs, we tend to go um, and do some practical tasks to try and actually get these things working. So put our theory into practice. Um, and it's really important in these classes that you come to the class, obviously, but you turn on your cameras and speak up with your microphones. Um, that way we can emulate a physical classroom as best we can. So the virtual classroom is as close to a physical classroom as we can get while we're online. So turning your cameras on and speaking with the rest of the class will make you feel like you're in a real classroom. In terms of the technology that we use to kind of engage our students, Zoom is our main one. We're using Zoom right now, and this is how most of our classes will take place. We also heavily use the Google Suite to do a lot of collaborative work. So if maybe my students are working on a presentation together, they might use Google Slides or a Google Doc to um, maybe plan something out in their documentation so they can collaborate with um, that technology. We use Echo 360 and Kaltura to um, host video recordings. So in the Diploma of IT, all of our classes are recorded so that if a student maybe their internet's not working on the day that their class is running, they can always watch the recording later so they don't miss out on anything. We also use a program known as Kahoot, which is essentially an interactive question-based um, platform. And it allows me to test my students' knowledge in a fun and interactive way. I guess the most important thing is that when we relate it to programming, programming has allowed life to continue as normal during a global pandemic. Um, so yeah, pretty important. <laughs> so what I am gonna do is I'm gonna show you a Kahoot now, just a very quick Kahoot. What I'll get you to do, if you could all please go to www.kahoot.it and enter in the following pin, you'll be able to join my Kahoot. This Kahoot is pretty simple. There's only three questions. And as each of these questions come up on your device that you're accessing um, the Kahoot on, you'll have little notifications about which options relate to which button on your device, and then you can select your answer, okay? So please, I'll give everybody just one minute to, to join this. The more people that join, the better. Um, you'll notice that you are automatically being assigned a fun little nickname. So you'll notice what your nickname is on your device and you should see yourself on the screen here as well. All right. So I'll start the countdown because we'll need to continue on with this. I'll start five, four, three, two, and one. If you've missed out, there will be a pin at the bottom of the screen that you can use and you should still be able to access it from there. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. What is Hello World? Okay, great. So it is a programming tradition. So it's the tradition that all programmers start with. Um, and it's just something to kind of get you into it. Um, something very quick and easy that you can get working to give you confidence that, hey, this code that you put together can actually do things, I guess. Um, what can programming be used for? Okay, good, a variety of answers. So all of them are correct in this case. So yeah, social media apps, um, games, a microwave oven, and also vehicles. So all of these things include some sort of programming. Last one, how can you ensure that you get the most out of the virtual classroom?
Okay, great. So turning your camera on is important, but speaking up and engaging with the class is really important as well. Very well done. And then if we go to this last page, we can see these are our top three. So congratulations to our top three. Cool. So you can see that's, that's kind of um, how the Kahoot works. Um, I always start my lectures off with a Kahoot just to uh, recap the previous week. So it helps my students keep on top of their studies, but it's also a nice and easy way to kind of get into the lecture. All right, so in conclusion, hopefully we're realizing that programming is not that scary and it's really similar to our spoken languages. It's also the foundation of modern technology. And the main reason we can even run the virtual classrooms is because programming has allowed that to happen. Um, if I leave you with, I guess, one last thought, we are living in a digital age where technology is an essential part of our lives and learning how to program is a great first step to understanding the technology that you use. So with that, I will now pass it over to two of my current students, uh, Michelia and Jonathan, and they will talk about their experience in the virtual classroom. Take it away, Michelle. Thank you, sir. So, um, hi everyone. My name is Michelia. I am from Indonesia, and I'm currently taking the diploma of IT at Monas College. So, uh, during the virtual classroom, Monas College has provided us with a lot of tools that is meant to be utilized. And these three tools are my favorite. So, first, there is Zoom that has a lot of cool features in a way that help us to engage and interact with the teacher as well as the other students. Uh, Zoom has the screen share that allow the teacher to share their material during the class. They also have the digital whiteboard that let the teacher explain a topic while also annotating important things to give us a clear picture of what is being taught. Um, I personally found these two features really helped me to understand better in the class. Uh, Zoom also has uh, multiple screen share, which is the feature that I found really helpful because it allows all the students to share their screen at the same time. Then a teacher walk around uh, a screen to check our progress and the teacher could also give us feedback at a time and help us if there is something we are not understand. Another cool feature in Zoom uh, is the breakout room because it gives me the opportunity to meet and also interact with the other students. Then there is Moodle, a learning management system that contains every information about our unit. Uh, it contains a recording of our class that we could watch anytime. It also has additional reading material and lecture slide, which will help us to boost up our understanding for each topic. Moodle also has a weekly quiz to test our knowledge. And I personally like this feature because it will let me know my level of understanding for a topic. Um, it also has a fair room where uh, the student could ask about anything related to that subject. Uh, the forum allowed the student to engage and interact with not only the teacher, but also the other students. Last is Kahoot, uh, which is my very, very virtual. Um, it is a game based platform. And with Kahoot, there will always be a fun quiz that is done before or after the lecture. And a group assignment. So the teacher will give us a group assignment which I found it gives me an opportunity to practice my communication skill and taught me how to work well in a team. So usually during the class, the teacher will give us some times and arrange us to the breakout room to talk about our project progress and how we will divide our responsibility. Um, but outside the class time, we also have a regular meeting. And for my group, it is on Sunday. And this meeting is done to help each other work and get to know each other better as well. And the picture that you guys see um, in the slide is actually taken during our regular meeting. Um, also, we want to collaborate and perform a good teamwork. So in order to do so, we utilize Google Drive, which allow us to create a folder that is accessible to all group members. So we could write a report as well as preparing our presentation slides together. Um, that is all for me. Thank you so much for listening. And my friend, Jonathan, will also share his experience about the virtual classroom. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Hello, everyone. My name is Jonathan. I come from Indonesia as well. And I'm a student in the Diploma of IT. 
I'm currently offshore and I have been studying in Monash College since October last year in a virtual classroom environment. So Monash College provides a lot of uh, online social activities. One of them is clubs. I really like clubs, to be honest. Uh, there are like games club, public speaking club, cultural exchange clubs, cooking, music, and there's also an anime and esports club. Uh, it works well even in online, as you can see here from the picture. Uh, it's us playing Uno together in the games club. It's really fun connecting with more students and, you know, just have fun together. Most of the clubs are also drop-in sessions, so you don't really have to log in. You can just jump into the Zoom link and then you can just, well, enjoy the ride. <laughs> uh, for more information about the clubs, you can just check in the College Connect in the Student Engagement tab. Also, another uh, social activity that Monash College provides is that we can become a student leader. Being a student leader is basically, we just help other students during orientation, which is uh, onshore, or we can just become really active in clubs. I myself is a student leader and I really enjoy helping other students who need guidance or assistance. And well, since becoming a student leader, I have made more friends because uh, being a student leader allows me to connect with more people. And I've also learned a lot of leadership skills. Okay, so making friends in Monash, especially online, it's, uh, it's not that scary, to be honest, because uh, there's a lot of platforms that Monash allows uh, us to connect with people. For example, in Monash Amigo, it is a social network for Monash students. It is a good place to find um, people who is also getting started in Monash. So it allows you to make early connections like uh, before you even start the course. You can find people with similar interests or uh, people who is in the same diploma as you so that you can group with these people later in the course. I mean, I met Michelle in Amigo as well. So yeah, I can watch it's a really good platform. Another uh, way to make friends is through uh, group assignments. Michelle also touched about this a little bit. Basically, it's, uh, it's an assignment that uh, we have to work in the same team for the whole trimester. There are a lot of uh, units that allow this. It allows us to connect with our friends more because throughout the whole trimester, you're going to be working with the same person, with the same people. Like in this picture here, it's, uh, we take this from our unit in engineering where we have to make like sort of a machine together for the whole trimester. It's really fun and it also allows us to connect with each other and be really good friends. Also breakout rooms are all, is also another thing that Monash College provides. Uh, basically it allows us to meet other students in the same lab or tutorial class to work through an activity together for a short time. So uh, usually it's random. Uh, you usually meet random people in the same class, but that allows you to meet new people and widen your connections to meet uh, new people and then just work together. Students in the tutorial remain the same throughout the whole trimester. So yeah, you should uh, be friendly with, with them, make some more connections with them and yeah, just be happy. That's all from me. Thank you for listening. Great. Thank you, Michelia and Jonathan for sharing your experience with us. It's great to hear that you've been enjoying your time at Monash College and have found the virtual classroom fun and engaging. Now, before you go, I just wanted to quickly let you know about our various support services that you've got access to at Monash College. Our commitment is to support you to achieve your best, and this doesn't change regardless of whether we're online, through the virtual classroom, or face-to-face. Even while you're studying online from your home country, you'll still have access to all the support services available at Monash College to help you along the way. So first, we have our friendly and dedicated student engagement and student services team. Um, this team is the team that Jonathan touched on earlier, um, and they help organize all the clubs and societies. So a few, just to name a few, um, the music club, the cooking club, games club, and there's plenty more. Um, we also have learning and careers advisors who will be able to connect contact to make sure you're on the right path to Monash University. They can help you with your everyday study and can help you transition smoothly into Monash University. Now, to achieve your best at Monash College, you need to feel supported in all areas of your life, and that's why your health and well-being is a priority at Monash College. If you have any problems or concerns, our counsellors offer free confidential counselling to help you with your personal, academic and emotional challenges. And of course, the teachers are wonderful and are dedicated to helping you achieve your best, if I do say so myself. Thank you for joining. We hope this has given you a better understanding of what studying in the virtual classroom is like at Monash College. If you'd like some more information, scan this QR code to visit our website, which has information on the virtual classroom, frequently asked questions, and student testimonials.
If you have any questions, send them to marketing at monashcollege.edu.au and you'll receive an answer as soon as possible. Also, please follow us on our social channels to see what activities you might be able to get involved with while at Monash College. Thank you for joining. We hope to see you soon in the virtual classroom at Monash College, as well as in Melbourne when we can meet face-to-face -face again very soon.